All right, guys, in this video, um, I'm making this video because I'm just letting you guys know that right out of the, the gate, without some special squared O-ring, this marker, HDB68, it can't handle 1100 uh, HPA PSI. Uh, I got this open now because I blew out the, the heat core O-ring, so... I was just taking it open to make sure that that's what I did. As soon as I shot my second shot, I made a video, and the second shot was a Canada 9.9 .9 gram riot ball, and sure enough, all the air spat out the barrel, so here I am. But, yeah, I just, now, I made a video before about this before in power tuning, but I actually got the core open up this time, so I can kind of show you guys more about what this is about inside. Um... Yeah, and I can go over also about the barrel too, as well, because I got it open. But yeah, basically, same setup pretty much. Here's your, this is your HDR valve, the cap and the bottom. And it's pretty similar to that, the HDB one. But anyways, now that I got this open, I can explain a little bit more about the power kit and all that stuff and... Uh, but yeah, here's the uh, this part here is just all the sear and the, the trigger housing and stuff and the spring and Very few parts in there um, This part here is that rubber detent Seal part that they were talking about that's breaking the balls you got these two hooks right there that are holding the ball back from rolling down the barrel but when you push them forward, they have to push through that hook. So there's no give or room to go around them. So when that ball fires out, it's like running a, uh, it's like taking those hooks and just running them straight through like a paintball or something. It's going to crush it or break it. So I can see why that's being an issue. But this rubber is very tacky too also. So uh, it's kind of got a problem with the jewels. <clears throat> but you just got to grease them a bit. But anyway, that's the part that they're talking about. It's just a little, it's really hard, soft, kind of hard, soft rubber, uh, but it's very tacky without lube. <clears throat> and that just goes in here like this. <clears throat> you can always file those down too, which I noticed over time, mine are wearing down, so. Um, now here you got your, this is your spring, this is the bolt. And... There's a little bumper right here. Goes on there. So yeah, your bolt will go on here. And then this is your power pin. This little guy here. You can see it's got a flathead slot. And then a threaded end. Very easy to strip. And using heat on this one, usually most people have to use heat, so. And when you do it with this area, there's no O-rings you gotta worry about frying. So as long as you just take the bolt off, and I use a Bic lighter on mine, so it worked fine. I didn't hold the flame directly on it, like maybe a centimeter or two below it, and I just kept waving it back and forth, the lighter, with the heat. But anyways, you'll find that it, oops, there was the bumper. Uh, I have to wipe that, it's all full of sand, shit, or dust. But anyways, See, here's your bolt, there's your power pin. That's the threaded end of the power pin. So you just apply your heat right to this area. Like I said, I just use a lighter. Some people use water, boiling water. Some people use a heat gun. And I'm not sure if you can see down in there, but there's the threaded end, the flathead. So that's how you'll screw it out. <clears throat> and yeah, that's your bolt. So... See this over in here. Actually, it's not bad. So here, put that on. And then the bolt will go on like that. It goes in the spring, and then you have to push it in and turn this neck into that slot. So put your hand over this stuff so nothing pops off. And then while you're pushing in, kind of go like that. And then you gotta feed it down in there, and then it'll lock in place. But and and I'll take that back out. So, that part goes in the bolt. 
so once you open all the screws up and take the shell out this part will screw in there and then this here is your co2 restrictor this one is from the power kit it is not threaded it comes with a tool that you screw into there and then you just push it up into the tube and then you unscrew the tool once you push it in place but you can see there's no threads drill that out to yeah 1.5 millimeters or 116 which is almost the same thing pretty much <clears throat> and yeah that'll go installed up in here you can install this anytime uh, when the gun's put back together you can put it up in for CO2 use and then remove it for HVA use and yeah this is just your top shell and that's this HPA adapter and this part here, here's the barrel so yeah it's just a basic there's no knurling or nothing on the end of it no threads this part's kind of feathered off there at the end so it fits into that area and then here's the other end of it that's it man nothing on it so it just slides right in place so I'm pretty sure the Lapco barrels even the, the, the A5s I'm pretty sure those will just slide right in too like that I don't think there'd be any harm but I'm gonna do another video to check that one out soon but obviously this part here doesn't detach so you're probably gonna have to I don't know yet I have to further look but somehow you're gonna have to remove this tip or cut your barrel to this length so if you try to put a lapco barrel you're gonna have to cut the end off and you might have to grind a little I don't know how it looks but you're probably gonna have to grind something like this into it so if you can get this on a drill or a mill like a milling machine or something and even just hold sandpaper and take a little bit off at a time as it's spinning or a file or something <clears throat> but yeah that's the barrel it's not as long as it looks so <clears throat> I measured it before I took pictures and shit and it's in the group but yeah basically what I want to tell you guys is just don't use the 1100 man because I haven't used it's not like the HDR and HDB I've been shooting those on 1100 PSI pretty much since last August end of last August and those seem to be holding up but this one here clearly it doesn't I can't tell the, the o-rings different i have spare o-rings so i'm going to replace one now or i might just leave it out and go shop and get myself one of those square ones because i noticed they're pretty common so i just gotta go find the right size and i'm going to test that out and try it back with the 1100 again but to be safe now keep it at 850 or so and i mean even 850 that's more than you'll ever need man like 65 67 jewels uh yeah man like that's crazy you, you that's perp that's more than enough for less lethal especially with 16 rounds <clears throat> um anything else here i didn't cover um yeah to keep all this stuff nice and greased in here all these metal and metal parts and uh yeah when you every time you go to use your gun give a nice little spray of silicone spray up inside the co2 channel and as you fire it it'll lubricate all the o-rings and the parts it needs to do the seals and stuff and but yeah other than that man you don't need much maintenance on this uh like my hdrs and hdps and stuff like that uh, just the odd three or four times of opening up within a few months I, I greased them down wiped them down a little bit but other than that i've never had any issues with the internal parts or anything like that this is the first time i've ever had a seal break in all my guns and i've got like oh god like eight or nine different uh, t4e markers and i don't know maybe they're just catching on and putting shittier parts but i can't get a hold of that o-ring i shot at the barrel it's gone or it's either in pieces or it's somewhere in the rubble in the barrel but i can't compare it with uh, the older ones so i don't know what's up in there but I don't know I'm still debating on putting a an old o-ring from an older valve 
I might take that out and put it in just to use again, but I still got my other one for now. And Or I might just go try and get the square one and keep this open and see if I can pick one up tomorrow. But, yeah, man, from now, uh, I guess that's it. I think I covered everything here. Um, yeah, all right, guys. Take care, man, and have a good one.